thank you for your interest in a Charrington Model 3000 Beach Cleaner Sand Sifter. Your machine is designed and constructed to the highest of standards to give you many years of service if it is properly operated and maintained. The time which you take now to carefully view this tape and to study the operator's manual which is provided with the machine will prolong its life, enhance its performance, and prepare you for its safe operation. Charrington equipment is specialized hydrostatically driven equipment and to be operated by a competent adult. Safety and warning notes are found throughout the manual and on safety decals placed on the machine. Make it your number one priority to read and understand them. Before we begin to operate the beach cleaner in the sand, the tire pressures must be set at the values on the label, 8 PSI on the rear tires and 12 PSI on the front tire. Next, check the fluid levels, the engine coolant, the engine oil level, and the hydraulic oil level. The purpose of this tape is to discuss the basic operation and maintenance of the Model 3000. It's important that you study the manual to gain further insight into the design and operational details. We will start with the controls. Depending on which model you have, there will be a safety pressure switch either on the foot pedal or in the seat, one of which must be actuated to start the engine. The forward and reverse lever must also be in the neutral position. Once the operator is in position and the safety switches have been actuated, the engine can be started. The ignition switch has four positions, off, on, heat or glow plugs, and start. Approximately 10 seconds in the heat position should be sufficient to start the engine. This throttle lever controls the engine speed. It must be set in the top notches when the machine is being operated. Do not use this control to regulate the operating speed of your beach cleaner outside the range of these top notches. Forward and reverse movement as well as braking and ground speed is controlled by this forward reverse transmission lever. Generally, in practice, the operator rests his arm on the rubber pad and his hand on the transmission lever at all times while the machine is in motion. He has only to rotate his wrist to control speed, direction, and braking. Next, the digger depth control switch controls the digger. Up, down. Be certain that you allow enough time for the cylinders to go full stroke. It also controls the automatic function of the groomer bar system. When the digger is lowered, the groomer bar is also lowered. The groomer bar function may also be operated independently through use of this groomer valve lock. Opening the valve allows the groomer bar drag to work automatically in conjunction with the digger, while closing the valve locks the groomer bar in whatever position it is in at the time. This allows you to groom your beach without sifting. The screening system on your Charrington Model 3000 consists of slanted interchangeable sifting screens, an on-off vibratory separator, and an overhead conveyor flight system which carries unwanted material and debris into the hopper. The conveyor mechanism is actuated in forward, stop, or reverse by the screen control switch. Forward and stop are detented positions while the reverse position is spring returned and must be held to reverse the conveyor. The Model 3000 has an operator actuated vibratory separator system which provides superior sand debris separation under varying conditions. This works in conjunction with the screening function and is actuated by this separator foot control. Depressing this pedal causes the screen to oscillate, which in turn greatly enhances the separation of sand and trash. It's used as required to handle difficult situations, such as wet or sticky sand. You should note that there are two cylinders, one on each side of the screen. Called the digger cylinders, these control the digging depth of the Model 3000 
which is from 0 to 4 inches. On the rams of each of these cylinders is a series of snap-on cylinder spacer rings. These spacers are used to accurately control the digging depth. The fewer spacers, the deeper the machine penetrates. In operation, the cylinders must be tightly depressed against the spacers for the separation system to function properly and superior separation to occur. The hydraulically controlled dump hopper has two controls, one to hoist and one to dump sifted debris. This hoist control switch controls hoist and this hopper control switch opens and closes the hopper. As a matter of safety, make no quick moves or travel any farther than absolutely necessary with the hopper raised. The hopper must be hoisted a couple of feet before it can be dumped. The hopper also must be closed prior to lowering it. There are safety lockout switches in the circuits to ensure that this will happen. Your Charrington Model 3000 comes equipped with three interchangeable sifting screens. When first learning to operate the Model 3000, we suggest that you use the coarsest screen. To install this, you'll need a 9 16 socket on a short extension. Raise the hopper, pull the safety cylinder stops into position, remove the retaining cap screw, slide the screen up and out, and replace it with the coarse screen. It is a good policy to wear leather gloves when changing screens. Let's review the basic operating procedures of the Charrington Model 3000. Begin on a dry beach. Use the coarse screen for initial cleaning. It may be necessary to level the beach by grading with a Harley rake or dragging a 10 to 15 foot pole or heavy pipe to smooth irregularities and fill in badly eroded areas. Start the engine with forward reverse lever in neutral. Raise the digger about halfway up with the digger control valve. Place a combination of snap-in cylinder spacers on the digger cylinders on each side of the machine, which allows the digger point to just break the surface. This can be readjusted later to ensure that the digger point just erases the front wheel track. Speed up engine to near full throttle. Grasp the forward reverse lever with your right hand and start the machine forward slowly, about one half mile per hour. Grasp both screen control and digger control with right hand and engage both functions simultaneously. Move the forward reverse lever forward and increase your ground speed until sand goes no further than halfway up the screens before it sifts through. Keep your hand on this control as you are operating so that you can increase or decrease ground speed or stop movement as the situation requires. If there is loose dry sand, go fast. If there is wet sand, mounds or irregularities in the surface, go slowly. Remember, Ground speed determines the ability to sift the sand through the screens before it can be carried all the way up the conveyor into the hopper. When stopping or making sharp turns, reverse the preceding three items. The procedure would be to slow down, raise the digger, and shut off the conveyor system simultaneously. Stop the forward movement or turn sharply. Go slowly when turning. Stay off steep side hills. Operate in this manner for at least eight hours. After gaining operating experience, an alert operator will realize that there are other procedural possibilities, which will enable him to become more efficient. For example, increase or decrease the digger depth using different combinations of stroke limiters on the digger cylinder ram. It is inefficient to dig deep in damp sand. In fact, never dig deeper than necessary. A better looking beach can be maintained by cleaning half as deep, twice as fast, and twice as often. Read the owner's manual for additional operating information. It's best to begin by digging as shallow as possible while yet effectively picking up surface trash. You will find 
that an optimum digging depth for superior beach maintenance is about two inches deep. And this can be accomplished by setting the depth just deep enough to remove the front wheel track. In most cases, removing the three quarter inch spacer should be about right. Generally, you start out slowly, engage the conveyor system, and lower the digger simultaneously, then speed up to the required ground speed. Basically, your job is to clean up as much beach as you can in a given time while separating the trash from the sand, putting the trash in the hopper and the sand back on the beach. The ability to accomplish this is determined by your ground speed. If you move too fast, the sand will not have time to pass through the screen and some of it will be carried back into the hopper. This is not desirable. Conversely, if your ground speed is too slow, the operation is inefficient. You're not getting enough work done. By keeping your right hand on the transmission, speed control, and the corner of your eye on the screening bed, you'll be able to keep the sand from rising much more than halfway up the screen on a flat, uniform beach, and very little monitoring will be necessary once the effective speed is determined. However, if there are piles of sand, wet sand, weeds, or other irregularities in your path, you must be prepared to slow down and deal with the situation. When stopping, slow down, lift the digger, and stop the conveyor simultaneously. Then come to a complete stop. This leaves a nicer finish on the sand. The preceding covers basic operating techniques. After you've operated in this manner for a while, you'll want to experiment with your own settings in order to do the best job on your particular beach and daily conditions, and we encourage this. Some suggestions are, vary the engine RPM, change the surface speed of the conveyor, adjust your digging depth, and change sifting screens to a different hole size. Down by the water's edge or in wet sand, you may need to put all the spacers in to adjust the cleaning depth to a minimum level and make sure the sand sifts through. This also would be a good time to use the separator. It's important that after running the machine a couple of days, you again read the operator's manual, especially the operating procedures. Use the right sifting screen for the job. Larger hole size early in the season or for wet sand. Smaller hole sizes for fine screening. When changing a screen, knock out rocks and shells before sliding the screen out. To pick up weeds along the tide line where it is always wet, go slowly and keep your right hand on the digger control regulating the depth so that just the weeds and surface trash are picked up with a minimum of sand penetration. If the beach is covered with heavy debris, go slowly and skim the surface the first time over, digging progressively deeper on each subsequent cleaning until the sand is conditioned. We suggest that large, heavy trash be picked up manually. Where there are large quantities of small stones or shells, it's usually best to travel slowly with a relatively high engine RPM and conveyor speed. Do not intentionally run over bottles with the tires. You are least likely to break bottles if you slow or stop the conveyor just before the digger reaches the bottle. As soon as the bottle is on the conveyor, resume conveyor speed. The surest, safest way to keep from breaking bottles is to pick them up manually. Some operators have long-handled scoops which they use from the operator's seat. It's also very easy to step down off the machine and pick them up. Keep an eye on the conveyor. Occasionally a stone or other trash will cause one of the chains to jump out of time on the sprockets. They can be slipped back into place using a pinch bar over one of the flights and under the rear shaft. Rotate the conveyor while using a heavy screwdriver to raise the chain up and over the sprocket teeth until they are back in time. Never continue to run the conveyor when it is out of time. Always operate digger and screen controls simultaneously so that screens do not shake when out of the sand.
At the end of the shift, the hopper must be dumped and the machine must be washed down completely. A generous flow of fresh water at low pressure is better than using a pressure washer. Leave the engine compartment until last to give the engine time to cool down. Washing is especially critical in a saltwater environment and will add years of life to the equipment. After washing the machine, please follow the preventive maintenance schedule and greasing information as described on the label on the machine and in the manual. At the end of the work shift and prior to storing for the season, the Charrington Model 3000 should be thoroughly inspected and repairs made for loose or bent flights, conveyor tension, loose wheel nuts, or any other damage which may have been incurred. Before we conclude and you begin to produce a beautiful clean beach with your Charrington Model 3000, we'd like to draw your attention to important safety information. This equipment is specialty hydraulic drive equipment. Do not operate this equipment unless you are an adult and have thoroughly studied the operator's manual or have been instructed and trained by a competent operator. For safety as well as operator efficiency, the right hand should remain in contact with the transmission lever which controls forward, reverse and braking, except when actuating another control. The engine must be shut off and key removed when operator leaves the seat. Keep spectators away from the machine. All guards must be kept in place. Do not operate the Charrington Model 3000 if the neutral start switch or the operator presence control switch is not operational. Caution: Slow down when turning. Be especially careful when turning uphill. When operating parallel to a slope, the operator should be on the high side. Maximum slope for safe operation is 10 degrees when running parallel to the slope line. Some grades are too steep and should be cleaned perpendicular to the slope. Avoid taking dangerous chances. It is recommended that the operator wear safety glasses, hearing protection, and appropriate protective clothing. Maintain 8 PSI tire pressure on the rear tires, 12 PSI on the front tire. This concludes the visual training manual for the Charrington Model 3000. With correct operating and maintenance procedures, your Charrington Beach Cleaner will give you many years of excellent service. If you have questions which are not covered here or cannot be answered in the operator's manual, please call us at 1-800-966-1588. Thank you.